Hi, everybody. Hey, y'all. Hey, Welcome to Crew Bouge. Welcome to Crew Bouge. I'm and, Des uh, and I'm Ro. <laughs> We're Crew Bouge. We're Crew Bouge. We why not just, be Beaujolais? <laughs> yes, why not be Beaujolais? We're just two ladies who love to drink wine and, uh, and talk about it. Talk about it. And uh, how are you doing, Ro? How's your week been? What are your highs? You know, it's so crazy. It's been um, a very, very busy week, kind of like mentally taxing week, you know. Um, but I'm rounding the corner um, in life. I would just say in general, <laughs> it's like I'm rounding the corner. So I'm pretty excited about just, you know, new upcoming changes and all that good stuff. But it's like the hurdle to get to it. It's like, oh, oh my God. you got to wade through a whole bunch of stuff to get to like that next thing. So, yeah. um, but no, I mean, it's been a crazy busy week, but I've been so busy that I have not even had a chance to, you know, one of those, we just like the deep breathe, you know what I mean? Like I haven't had any right. chance to do any of that. So I'm going to lay low tonight um, right. and just kind of like decompress from the week. And I mean, drink some wine, you know, <laughs> that's always optional. And um, so, yeah, how was your week? My week was good. Um, also very busy, but overall good. No complaints, um, work, school, uh, planning a baby shower for my sister. So there's so much going on, but- a new baby Lewis. I know she has a different last name, but she will always be a baby Lewis. Yeah. She, she, whatever will be a baby Lewis to me. Yeah, I, I, me too. I mean, I I sometimes have to remember that like on my phone, she's baby sis and that needs to change. But like, she's always my baby sis. <laughs> We'll baby always be your baby, baby sis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's been a baby sis is having a baby. That's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's been a great week. Uh, no complaints at all. I the sun is still shining. It's it's been nice and warm. So perfect California week. Other than everything that's going on in the world. <laughs> I feel you. This bubble, it's all been good. You know, I mean, there's the, there, here go look, and there is the crazy, but hey, you know, it's, I think that's one thing that I do love about this. And I think that when we really started this podcast with the whole craziness of COVID, it was such a salvation for me in a sense of being able to, um, one for us, I mean, because we generally just drink wine anyway, right? So we generally drink wine when we talk and we talking on the phone and it's been like, oh, what you drinking? And then it's like, oh, you know, so it's been great to be able to share. And mm -hmm. um, thank you to everyone who came and hung out with us on our live. We are excited. We'll, uh, we'll be talking about like a new live that we have going on. But, yes. you know, hey, thank you so much for joining. And congratulations to um, Pia, who won ah, that lovely bottle of The Pessimist. Oh, my God. Um, and, um, you know, so we're excited about it. But, yeah, you know, hey, down to the, the magic last Sorry. <laughs> I was just saying that was good down to the last drop. I, it, well, I guess it took me all of two days to finish it, but it was delicious. I think, and I mean, we can wrap back around too, because I know you have to ask me the magic question, but I remember drinking it before. And I think sometimes you don't really get to truly appreciate the, it is, guys, it is deep purple like blueberry almost kind of wine and I mean so the deep rich color I it, and I agree it was good to the last drop it probably took me two days to I'm going to say it took me two days mm -hmm. <laughs> you know I didn't feel too bad about it but hey so. don't ever feel bad about that no I and know the only reason it took me two days is just because like I have other wines to drink for like school and stuff and so <laughs> had that been the only wine that I had open oh I would have killed that bottle probably Thursday evening yeah easy 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 so ask me the magic question the magic question is Ro what are you drinking ding 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 and guys, it's so funny. We've talked about this winery before. If you go back and look a few episodes, this is like one of my most favorite wineries, period. My friend Asha, who I'm going to say her name like 20 times during this, she lives out in NoCal. Um, and um, so she I need took to meet me at some point. 
when I tell you we've got to do it, I'm going to have to, so I'm obligated to fly out because I'm vaccinated and all that good stuff. So I'm pretty much obligated to meet you guys and I have to connect you guys because she's like, she's part of like our whole like wine culture. Like when we, when I went out there and I think I talked about it briefly before, this was, I think our first stop and we went to Peju. And this actually, they won like best winery in North America, like recently. And when I tell you guys, when you go there, it's a whole like Zen type of experience. Anyone that knows me knows that if you want a what my favorite white is Sauvignon Blanc, hands down. Um, I generally reach for one from New Zealand. However, um, Peju has an amazing, amazing um, Sauvignon Blanc. And um, but Tell yeah, so we went to the. Mm -hmm. Tell me why Sauvignon Blanc is one of your favorites. Like, what about it is makes it one of your favorites? I think because. They have so many, the, the flavors to me are very layered, I guess you can say. Um, I am, I like the fruity flavor. So this, I get like um, pineapple and sometimes, you know, depending upon what it is, it's like pear and pineapple and you get some that are super strong citrus, but it's got a good body to it. It has a good weight to it, but it's something that, um, I, and it's funny, I don't know, it, it's just, it fits my taste buds, but I think because I like the fruity without the super sweet um, and it has a good full body, I think that's what I, in terms of white. That's what mm -hmm. I appreciate. Not as yeah. clearly not as heavy as like a Chardonnay, but it is something that like you have to be careful when you're drinking a Sauvignon Blanc in the summer. Um, but I have it's, I just it was one of the things that I gravitated to. I mean, I think initially, you know, you you start with the sweet, and there's no shame in my game. Yes, I started with Boone's Farm. Yes, I did. Strawberry Fields. Okay. Strawberry Fields Boone Farm was my jam. And then I moved on to Moscato, and then I moved on to Pinot Gris, and then I moved on to I, I got to taste the Sauvignon Blanc and I literally go and reach for that as my white now. Um, and I think it's actually the grape. Um, with this one, this is a little bit different. They do 2% of what they mix in the batch in French oak. And then the other 55%, well, the other percentage is done in um, steel, steel, um, steel containers. Uh, but I mean, held at 55 degrees. You, they have a science down to it. Mr. Peju has a science down to it. And um, I, I just, I don't know, it's, it's something about it. But I, it, it is, if, if you are in the market for a little drier white um, that you like the flavors of pineapple, like mango and pear and citrus, Sauvignon Blanc is your friend. It will always mm -hmm. be your friend. Um, this is Peju Winery. Um, so it is, and this is in Napa. So if you guys go to Napa, I'm telling you, do it. Bring your pocketbook with you. <laughs> Absolutely. I this is if you guys go back and look. This is the winery that I went to that that necessitated me buying a case so that I could ship it home. So this was it's one of my most favorite places. So I'm in no way surprised that they won like best winery in North America. Mm -hmm. um, this one is a 2019. And it retails, in, I got it here in Texas for about $27. And you can get it at wine.com for about $36, $37 shipped to you. Um, it's 13.8% alcohol. So it's got a little weight to it. It's got a little weight. We and, need an alcohol um, this week. Yeah, it's just, it's good stuff. So that's what I'm drinking. Um, and it, I don't know if you guys can really see the color of it. It looks almost clear. It's hard to see with like the background that I have because it is yellow, but it's this wonderful, like very light straw color. Um, but yeah, it, it's an awesome, awesome wine. It's one of my most favorites. Um, I, I'm hoping that it'll make it to tomorrow afternoon. It's been a long week. And if um, it doesn't, but yeah. it doesn't. So that's what I'm drinking this week. That sounds good. It doesn't. There's, you know, I, you know. I woke up this morning. What do they say now? They're like, she woke up this morning and she chose violence. That's me. I woke up this morning and I chose to drink my wine. Thank you. 
I mean, sometimes so- I wake up and the thought in my head is, what wine will I drink today? <laughs> I mean, because that's just, that's, that's, I mean, as a winer, that's who I am. That's, you know- the, that's the things that I prioritize in the morning when I wake up. Uh-oh. Ro? And I mean, why shouldn't you? Because oh, you I think I'm still here. You're here. I see you now. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, <I'm gonna> <laughs> but what were you saying? Okay. I'm sorry. I missed that uh, last part. I think that that's one of the things. No, I said I, I totally agree. And I think that it's also whenever you're like a foodie or anything, like people that are foodies, they wake up in the morning and they think like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do for breakfast? What am I going to do for lunch? Oh, what am I going to do for dinner? You know, so I don't really see it in any way as a lose-lose. You're a wino and you get up in the morning like, huh. And I'm certain now that you have like the little curveball thrown in of, um, with actually balancing class and some other things or whatever and the wines you have to drink the ones you have to taste and you know with school and education but you know with me I just go I you know I need to stop taking random trips to total wine and more but you know hey I mean if I can get me a wonderful bottle of you know some some good peju you know I, I, I splurged on the cab saw. I mean, the, the, I, no, the uh, yeah, the cab saw. <laughs> so okay. I did a nice little splurgation. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Very nice. I did. I, I don't know. I deserve it. <laughs> so, oh, absolutely. I mean. When, but enough about me. What, enough about me, Des. What are you drinking this week? I'm just going to say this pretty last color point, over and that is you need to treat yourself. So buy that nice wine. I mean, there doesn't even need to be a reason just do it. Self-care, you know, just do it. Do something nice for yourself. And if that includes buying a nice bottle if of there's wine, nothing, If there's nothing, yeah, if there's nothing that this pandemic has shown me more than that, it's that there is definitely a balance that it's a tightrope walk, you know what I mean? Like in terms of, and I don't want to call it a tightrope walk because I don't want to make it seem like it's all life or death or whatever, but it definitely is um, creating balance, right? Mm-hmm. Just to create the balance of of being able to enjoy yourself as well as, you know, saving for the future, preparing, you know, one of the good things with me, it's just me. I ain't got no kid. I don't have any of those kind of things that I have to be concerned about. So... I'm excited, you know. Yeah. But yeah. All right. So, Des, what you drinking? Well, I am also drinking wine from Peju. I am drinking Peju Province, not to be confused with a Provence from France, which uh, mm-hmm. which is known for their rosés. As you, let me actually show the bottle again so you can get a look. You see this, and you look at the color. You might think, oh, that's a very that's a very dark colored rosé. But this is actually a blend of white varietal wines and red uh, red barrel wines that uh, Tony Peju came up with in his kitchen. And uh, this is the province. It's really, really good. Um, I don't even know where to begin with this. Um, so I have this. I would- Can we start with the color? Yes. So we start with the color. Actually, maybe it's a little bit better in my glass to show you. It's almost a, like, um, I would say, like, a cranberry color. Like, it's very clear, as you can probably see. But it's, like, a, it reminds me of cranberries or even, like, a strawberry. I don't know. It's, a, it's just a beautiful, rich color. Um, you get a lot of those red fruits, cranberries, raspberries, um, even some nectarines, some baking spices. It's so good. I remember when I went to the winery and we tried, we tried five different wines and I remember this one the most. There was another red that I fell in love with that I brought home, but I honestly couldn't even tell you what it is. It's in my collection. But from that trip, I knew that I had the province and I knew that I had the red. So like this has just stayed with me. And I think that was like back in October. So I've been thinking about this wine for so long. And when you said that you wanted to drink your Peugeot Sauvignon Blanc, and I was like, 
I guess it's time. It's time for me to open up this province. And it's so funny because yesterday I was actually like, oh, but I always want to make sure because it's so good. I want to make sure that I can go and buy more. And they mm -hmm. actually did a, a April Fool's Day prank. We were recording this on eight, Friday, April 2nd. But their tweet was, we have run out of province, which is like one of their favorites. Like everybody loves them for their province. Um, and so and then they were like, oh, April Fool's. So it was a nice, actually, you know, lighthearted little prank. But at first I was like, sold out. I can't get any more of this, but I can get more. I can get plenty more. <laughs> um, let's see. On that, the cost for this wine was... Thirty-two dollars, mm -hmm. and the winemaker for this, I do want to shout it out because it is a female winemaker. Her name is Sarah Fowler, and she was named best local winemaker by Napa Valley Life magazine in 2016, 2017, and 2018. So she is doing her thing, and she is doing it very well because, yeah, the people love this so much. It is. 13.5 alcohol percent, which I'm so surprised because it has red wine in it. Like, how does your soft block have more alcohol than me? I'm so, I'm shocked by that. But uh, very good. This is a wine. Um, so I think it could be with the, it could be the white varietals. Yeah, definitely. I think that's, that's exactly what it is. Um, hold. So, so Tony Peggio, he made this wine as a wine, if you wanted to bridge the drinkers that are more fans of like white wines, he wanted to bridge them to like enjoy red wines as well. So that's why he found this like perfect blend to make this. And um, it's really good. And one of the great things about this is it's a year round wine. You can year round wine. You can drink it at any point. Um, and especially with Easter coming up, like I was thinking like, my one of my favorite things my sister-in-law makes is these like ham sandwiches like whenever we would go to wineries in Virginia she would make us these like amazing like ham I guess they were sliders with like cheese and uh, a little bit of that um, Dijon on top so it had that nice kind of like spice to it and so I was thinking this would be perfect Easter is right around the corner on Sunday actually and this would be a perfect like Easter dinner wine um it's, it's just, it's so good. It goes with oh, so many things. And I'm trying to be sure that that's everything I had to talk about. But speaking of Easter, Ro, do you remember that Easter that we went to brunch with my brother? <laughs> it just popped in my head. And you're cracking up because as per usual, this is one of those situations where it was like, off the chain we went to I can't remember the name of the restaurant but it was in the French Quarter in New Orleans yes and we were there for hours and we were there for hours because our food would not come out at some point Ro was like the savior because she happened to have jerky so I remember we were just like eating jerky like passed under the table while we waited for our food and also the waiter was like he felt so bad that he plied us with tequila shots which i don't know well i mean looking well, back it's not, not a, a good idea. idea it was not a good idea because we were starving and drinking tequila oh god um, just it just it was, it was at a hotel i know it was part of the hotel the the restaurant was attached to the hotel but it was a wonderful thing and then it's like we event and i don't even know if it was because it was easter that things were slow maybe but why I had a bag of jerky, I don't know. Like, it, it's like, so if anyone, like I was, it wasn't so much keto, but I was just kind of doing like a little low carb kind of thing, trying to trim down. And um, it's Dukes. I think it was like Dukes or something, but mm -hmm. they're these little, like little jerkies. And why I had a bag of them, I don't know, but they saved us that day. You saved the day. I mean, we, it, we weren't waiting for like half an hour or an hour. I think it took almost two hours for our food to come out. Like when I say and we they were bringing us the drinks whole morning. And, and bringing us drinks and bringing us drinks. I'm like, this is not boding well for an Easter Sunday brunch. <laughs> right. It was, I mean, but it, of course it turned out amazing because. It did. The whole day was awesome. And I believe there was a parade. There was like this big. We did go to the parade. Happens, 
we looked for it. Well, I don't think we ever found it, but then we ended up going dancing somewhere on like Bourbon Street or one of the side streets, which was amazing yeah. in itself. It was a full on celebration. It um, was an amazing Easter. So yeah, that's one of, it, I mean, because, well, last year we didn't do anything because COVID. And I'm trying to think the year before, I don't, I don't know. Anyways, that's my last Easter memory that I have. And so as soon as I thought of ham sandwiches, I thought of Easter and then I thought of that whole event. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> it was awesome. It was so awesome. Like, I mean, because I think like brand booked the book, the, you know, booked the, the venue for us and all kinds of stuff. And we just kind of showed up. We walked and it was just it was one of those things where if we were not family and like friends, it would have been like a bad situation. Um, but it was definitely one of those awesome days one it was of awesome, awesome i mean because yeah we were all sitting there hangry but it was it, it was a great and the, day and the, and the bartender kept coming back like hey i've got these for you you know here you it's like maybe if i get them drunk enough they won't realize they haven't eaten no we're gonna realize we haven't eaten okay <laughs> we're gonna realize and I think it might have been like one guy in the kitchen and then it was like we had already ordered and then we were a bigger party. So it was kind of yeah. like we couldn't really leave and it was hard to get, you know, tables and everything. Like anyone that doesn't has never lived in New Orleans doesn't understand that New Orleans is the most Catholic city in the United States of America. <laughs> like they can party as hard as they want. But when it come, when it is Ash Wednesday, all of the shenanigans stop. To a halt. It's like 1201. It's like, er, and then, you know, up until Easter. And um, yeah, no, oh my gosh, I forgot, almost forgot about that. <laughs> almost forgot about that day. Awesomeness, awesomeness. Um, what would you pair your wine with? You would pair it with everything? Oh, yeah. So I would pair it with, it's going to go great with barbecue. It's going to go great with, um, it can go great alone. If you want to just drink this alone, like on your porch on a nice day, or, you know, just if it's rainy outside and you just want to look out the window as I sometimes do and just like look at yeah. the rain and drink your wine, it will yeah. go great with anything. How about your wine? I don't think we got I, into that. I mean, honestly, because I think that's what I like about Sauvignon Blanc is that one, it is something that for people that are white wine drinkers, um, or it, whether you're not, even if you're a red wine drinker, because I do, I mean, I drink everything. Let me not even discriminate. Um, but if you are a white wine drinker or if you're looking for something that you can drink that is light enough to handle like heat in the summer, but heavy enough to do like a chicken, I would say even like a pork chop, mm, fish 100%, oh, yes. you know what I mean? Like it would be awesome. Like summer salads, you know, here in Houston, we actually are kind of like unseasonably cool normally. I mean, but a couple of weeks ago, it was like 85. So it's it's now, it's I think the high of the day might have been in like the 70s. Yesterday was like the 60s. And, you know, so people here, they have to put on a coat. It's like, oh my God, it's 40 degrees. What am I going to do? But um, definitely, you know, I would say try a Sauvignon Blanc. You don't have to necessarily spend a ton of money on it. But definitely um, go for that, that good Sauvignon Blanc, I say. And both of these wines are very reasonably priced. I mean, now some of their other wines are a little bit more expensive, a little bit. Little, and by a little bit, I mean, hmm. but uh, both of these wines, I think you said 20, 28? It was, it, it was so, it was like 20, it was like 27-ish. I've seen it as okay. low as 23. So okay. you can do it online, 23. If you do wine.com, it goes up to 30, it goes up to 35, but yeah. you know. So yeah, both of these wines are very well priced. Let's just say like under 40 for these wines. And um, if you are in the Napa area or going, um, their, their tastings are $45 per person and they are outside and um, your parties are separated. So I, I believe last time I went, it was like six people max per party, but everything is like very reasonably spaced. They have a 10 up so you can go in and and, and I mean, and, and $45 is super reasonable in this grand scheme of things. Um, mm -hmm. The, so the 2018 cab saw that I got, <laughs> you know, and mind you, it wasn't <laughs> it crazy. It was like 75 bucks, but you know, it's mine. It's, it's mine. Wow. It's surprise. <laughs> but um, if you figure these are the wines you're going to be tasting. So you're going to be tasting wines that are bottled 75, you know, anywhere from 50 
to $125, like $45 is nothing. And they are generous with their pores. And, um, you know, if you made it your only stop in Napa that day, you be you would not be disappointed at all. You, yeah, you would love it. It's. Uh, I also want to add that they are a family-owned winery. Uh, it's started by Tony and his wife, and now his daughters uh, still help like run the whole winery, which is great. Um, and also great customer service. I am so mad at myself. I remember the province so well, and I remember our taster telling us all about the province, but I cannot remember his name. But we absolutely loved him. He was amazing, and he gave us all the attention and was very informative about all the wines that he was pouring for us so great service yeah yeah so so. Anything, is there anything else I don't know I don't think so I think we're good like I'm excited I I can go ahead and tell you now this bottle is going to make it to tomorrow <laughs> and I make no promises after that like tomorrow it's going to make it to tomorrow and now you kind of like forced me that like I'm going to have to order a, a bottle of the product um yeah just because I had to I'm, I'm I'm definitely you know in a place now where you know I could do a little bit more than what I was doing so I'm excited about it exciting well thank you guys for watching um you can follow us um and actually we're going to be going live what in two weeks yes I believe that's correct two weeks Follow us on Instagram. We're at crewboo, C-R-U-B-O-U-G-E underscore podcast. Um, and that's on Instagram. And then, of course, you can do us crewbooge on, um, on uh, YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> I almost uh, I had a brain freeze. And um, so, yeah, if you have any questions about anything that we talked about here, please leave us questions, comments, that kind of stuff. We try to be very responsive. Um, but yeah, follow us on Instagram. We follow back. So, yes. you know. And I believe our next podcast, we're going to be diving into Bouvre because that was a request from one of the people that joined our live uh, uh, last week. I was going to say a couple weeks ago. Uh, so I'm very excited about that because I recently started drinking Bouvre and I love it. And Ro, I know you're going to love it as well. So. I That's can't wait on. to get this Vouvre in the house. Vouvre <laughs> in the house. It's funny. Like, he's one of our, he's one of our gentlemen that kind of keeps us, you know, one of our, he's a NOLA too, right? He's a NOLA. Oh, gosh. Everything great is a NOLA. Everything. Oh, well, yeah. Most things. Most things. <laughs> but thank you guys for so much. We appreciate you for hanging out with us. And we look forward to talking to you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Da 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 da